Hello and welcome. Uh, I'm Casey Fried Jennings and I am the director of Girl Rising's US Educator Program. Um, and we're really, really happy to have you here with us today. I've been with Girl Rising since the very beginning, since it was merely a spark in the eye of a motley bunch of documentary makers and journalists um, who never ever would have imagined what Girl Rising has become. And we're especially happy to have you with your have you here today to introduce um, our Girl Rising climate change lesson, because climate change um, is perhaps, as we all know, the most critical issue facing us and our world today. And we also know that it has captured the attention and imaginations of young people um, everywhere, like your students. In a few minutes, I'm going to introduce you to the two educators who will take you through the lesson. Um, but first, I'd like to give those of you who don't um, know us so well, just a little bit of information, and I promise just a little bit about the background of Girl Rising. So first of all, who are we? Uh, Girl Rising is a global nonprofit organization, and we use stories and storytelling to change the way the world values girls and their education, and at least as important the way girls value themselves. And we're here today because we believe and we've seen that Girl Rising can be a really, truly powerful resource for educators who want to inspire their students to see beyond their borders, both physical and cultural, um, to understand issues of educational and gender equity, to develop empathy, uh, to recognize that they have a story that matters and a, and a voice that deserves to be heard, and that they have personal agency that they can make change happen for themselves, for their families, for their communities, and yes, for the world. I'm gonna now pause here just for a moment. Um, to ask you a quick question is not a test, I promise you that, um, but it will help us set the scene here just a little bit. How many girls, this is the question, how many girls worldwide do you estimate don't attend school? And you can just put it in the chat um, and Molly or someone will tell me what you're saying. One million. 5 million, 30 million, 130 million. How many girls do you think are not in school now? We've got everything. 30 million a couple times, 10 million a couple times. Lorena has 130 million. Well, sadly, Lorena, you're right. Uh, unfortunately, the number is 130 million and it's getting even worse because of the pandemic. And the reasons, of course, are complicated. They um, stem from child marriage, modern day slavery, gender violence, extreme poverty, all the stuff that extreme poverty brings along with it, religious and cultural tradition among others. And that is the distressing part of it and it is the depressing part of it for sure. But Girl Rising is really about the other side of the story. Girl Rising is about what happens when girls are educated, um, about how the world becomes healthier, stabler, more prosperous, just better just better for everyone. And Girl Rising is also, and this is really important to us, it's also about how we can all, especially young people, be empowered to make change. So these girls here, these are the girls, these are the girls who I call the faces of change. They're the girls whose stories of resilience, persistence, and hope we tell in the Girl Rising film and whose stories are at the very heart and in fact, the very soul of all our educational resources. For example, Soka, who's right there in the middle. Soka is an orphan from Cambodia, and she was forced to scavenge in the garbage dumps of, non, of Phnom Penh just to survive. But all the time she dreamed of an education that she was determined to get. And Roxana down there in the lower right-hand corner, her family are pavement dwellers in Calcutta, India. And she has this amazing imagination and it takes her and it takes all of us soaring into this remarkable and colorful world of possibility. And Wadley, Wadley is on the left in the middle row there. She just, she just won't take no for an answer. I love all of these stories and I love all of these girls, but in a minute you'll get to see one of my favorites and that's Suma and you'll get to see her story. And Suma, that's Suma there in the upper left. She's from Nepal. So now, Future Rising. Future Rising is a major new initiative of Girl Rising. It's one that we've developed because we know that finding solutions to climate change is absolutely critical to our survival. 
and because we know that educating girls is essential to finding and realizing those solutions. And we believe that the stories we tell can help make those connections and can help make those connections powerfully. So with that, I'm gonna introduce you to our two <clears throat> primary presenters, both who are very good friends of Girl Rising, both who are amazing educators, and both who are very, very valued partners to us. First, you'll hear from Jennifer Williams, an extraordinary force of nature and the founder of Teach SDGs and Take Action Global. Um, we developed the Future Rising lesson in collaboration with Jen's Climate Action Project. And then you'll meet Julia Fliss, who wrote the Future Rising lesson, and she'll walk us through it. And she is another force of nature equal to Jen. And frankly, I am humbled by both of them. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen now, and I'm going to, and Jen is going to take it away. Thank you so much, Casey, and wonderful to see so many friends that I've never met in person here for the live broadcast that I've been able to connect with on social media and across our, our education world. So as Casey mentioned, I am a global educator, honored to be standing next to Julia Fliss today. And thank you so much to Casey and to Molly for inviting us to be a part of this conversation, this very important conversation around girls and climate change. So as Casey mentioned, we've come together as partners on this mission. And as we were preparing for today's session, it occurred to me over the past several weeks, it's really around this idea of connecting points. And for me, the connecting point to Girl Rising came from Julia and coming together as we connected, never meeting in person, but together on social media. And that I think connection and us coming together was really around this idea of stories. And I know Julia in her classroom brings educators in from all around the world to also share their stories. I, I know, Julie, you had me come once and you talked about, just tell your story. That's what my students want to hear. And so my work is very uh, much focused on this idea of climate change and this conversation of climate action education and how can we all in our classrooms, no matter where we are around the world. And I know when we first joined in, Casey was looking at where's everyone joining from? Everyone can be a part of this work. Everyone is a climate action educator. And when I came to get to know Girl Rising and the work that Casey and Molly and their team have been doing, really for me, it came down to this opportunity of sharing of stories. And so we're gonna talk a little bit today about this idea of stories, but we wanted to start with one very special story. And as Casey mentioned, one of her very favorite stories that she loves to share with Suma. So with that, I'm honored to share with you Suma's story. Girls who go to school see immediate benefits far beyond the things they're learning. Being a student enhances their status in the community. It improves their health. It makes them safer. But in the developing world, getting an education is not what most people expect girls to do. Girls are expected to work, to fetch water, to care for younger children, to get jobs, or worse. It happens to girls like Suma. Suma's parents didn't send her to school, they sent her to work. In Nepal, it's called Kamlari. I write songs to remind myself that my memories are real. And often, because there's so much sadness behind me, what comes out is sad. Both of my parents were bonded as Kamlar and Kamlari in their childhood. That's the way things have been around here. That's the way they have been for the poor. You have to bond yourself to a master, otherwise, 
How will you live? This was the house of my first master. My mother and father bonded me just so that I would have somewhere to live and enough food to eat. I was six years old. Fagutharu was a landlord and a miller. He made me work from four in the morning to late at night. I had to clean the house and wash the dishes and go to the forest to fetch firewood. When I wasn't minding the goats, I had to mind the children. The goats were nicer. The daughters made fun of me because my clothes were torn. They teased me. They beat me. I wanted my mother and father to take me back. I wanted them to let me stay at home and go to school like my brother. But when I thought about how poor they were and how much they too had suffered, it made me feel weak. I couldn't ask. This was the house of my second master. Janak Mala wore a uniform to work. He and the mistress of the house were very hard-hearted. Unlucky girl, they used to call me. Hey, unlucky girl, do this, they'd shout. They made me sleep in the goat shed and wear rags and eat scraps from their dirty plates. I can't really talk about everything that happened to me here, but I will never forget. This is where I began to write songs. Only the songs got me through. This was the house of my third master. I was 11 years old when I arrived at Chitai Tharu's house. I had been a Kamlari for five years. It wasn't as bad here. I mean, it was bad because there was a lot of work. But there was a lodger in that house, a school teacher called Bimul Sir. He changed my life.
Bimal sir convinced my master and mistress to enroll me in a night class. All of us would gather after finishing our day's work and we would learn to read and write. I loved that night class so much. It was run by social workers for girls just like me, Kamlaris. We would also talk to the teachers about what it was like to be a Kamlari. And as we talked, we began to realize that bonded labor was, and isn't it, slavery. The teachers who ran the night class began to go from house to house. They wanted to liberate us. One teacher, Sita Didi, told my master that he was breaking the law by keeping me as a Kamlari. She talked about the law against bonded labor, and the law about children's rights, and the law on labor rights, and the law against domestic violence and trafficking. She talked to him about justice and injustice, and she demanded that he set me free. My master said no. Once made, a bond couldn't be broken. Sita Didi didn't give up. She kept arguing. She came back day after day. And in the end, she led me home to my mother and father. I am my own master now. I have no mistress. I was the last bonded worker in my family. After me, everyone will be free. I feel as though I have power. I feel like I can do anything. And I have important things to do. Inside this house, is a girl like I was. Away from her parents, working morning to night, wanting so badly to be free. We have come to this house, the house of her master, to say, we know you have a Kamlari working for you. You must set her free. I've seen where change comes from. When it comes, it's like a song you can't hold back. Suddenly, there's a breath moving through you and you're singing. and others pick up the tune and start singing, too. And a sweet melody goes out into the world and touches the heart of one person, then another, and another. So welcome back. <laughs> and that's a little hard to follow, but for me, I watch that. And I have to say that for me as an educator, it's not very often that I get the time to spend 10 minutes really immersed in a story of another, but I would imagine some of my fellow educators sitting here and I just have ideas that come for me of how I could take this to the classroom. Conversations that would stem and um, see Julia holding up store. And she, I know she's seen this many times and has written lessons around this. But every time you see this, every time you hear a story, what do you take from it that is new? For me today, a different take on it that I, than I've had before. 
I really heard this message of ownership. And maybe I'm hearing that message today that I'm a different point in my life than I was several months ago when I first saw this. But this idea of how can we empower our students to have ownership over their own stories? What might that look like in the classroom? I know when we first came together and looked at how could we bring Suma's story and this idea of bringing girls' education and climate action together, we started to look at identity and how might her life experience, experiences influenced her identity that we heard so much about in her story. Um, something I also picked up on and I saw other educators pop up when she said, he changed my life referring to her teacher and those moments as a teacher, like I have my university students and that's why they've gotten into this field. They want to make a difference through the lives of young people. But her identity, her worldview, her future, which brings me to this roadmap that I think originally brought us together early on, talked about those connecting points. I know that's what connected me and Julia and then Julia connected me to Girl Rising. And one of those connection, connecting points were these 17 goals, these goals that we as a world came together in 2015 to reach by the year 2030. And I can say, I, as an English teacher here in Florida, of course, when I first saw this roadmap, much like when I first heard Suma's story, one thing came to mind for me that maybe changed over time. And for me, that goal that represented me as an educator was SDG4, quality education for all. Soon after getting to know the SDGs, I started to have interest across this roadmap. So moving from SDG 4 to SDG 17, looking at those connecting points of how we could move forward to take action for the world. But then I started to say, well, of course, when we talk, we talk about partnerships and we talk about quality education, I need to think about equality, equity, bringing me then to SDG 10. That was early on. About two years later into my work with the SDGs, an English teacher focused on communication and spoken word and the stories that we want to tell. Someone who never would have thought I would ended up in a science uh, career focused now solely on SDG 13. So my path across these goals became like this journey. I know I spoke with Casey and Julia and Molly on this and, and Casey was like, yes, here at Girl Rising, we're thinking about SDG 4, SDG 5, SDG 13. I'd imagine some of you who are here today look at this and say, well, I've been talking about poverty or life on land or life below water my entire career. And I really think that the stories of our students can be represented so beautifully in these SDGs. So not, no matter where you're at, and as I mentioned early on, if you're if you're working in the humanities or if you're working in the arts, for me, the idea of climate education, also paired with girls' education, these are challenges that we all need to come together around. So this idea of climate action education and who is part of this? I know for me, this kind of thought brought me back to when I was an English teacher in K-12 and I would talk across the curriculum into different content areas and I would bring in these ideas of storytelling and of reading and writing and listening and speaking. And so many teachers who weren't in ELA were coming to me and going, well, I'm not a reading teacher. So that doesn't necessarily apply to me. And I was like, at that moment, we're all reading teachers. And I think that's where I see us now. We're all climate action educators. We all have a responsibility to serve every student. We, I know Julie and I think about this often that we are serving the students in our own classrooms, but really every global student are our students. So we have Take Action Global. We are a nonprofit global education uh, organization working on a mission of climate education for all. We bring teachers and students together in these online environments. And we have our climate action project. Maybe some teachers have come to us with that. And 
I have to say that I remember we were about two years ago, we were in one of our events. It was the Climate Action Day event. And we were talking to our presenters, global leaders, um, science experts in climate, teachers and students. And we would ask them these questions on what is the one thing that's going to make a difference as we work to reach this goal of climate change and protecting our planet? Speaker after speaker two years ago said, the number one thing we need to do is girls' education. And that was really an aha moment for me. And I said, we need to find ways so our teachers recognize that climate education isn't going to be reserved for the environmental studies classrooms. We need to find ways to have these grab and go resources that we can provide to teachers that may be new to the conversation around climate action. So what does it look like for four-year-olds, for university professors, for anyone involved in this work? So we started to reach out to the best of the best in each of these areas. So what does climate education look like with digital citizenship? When we talk about things like coding and computer science, and for us, Girl Rising, representing the best of the best that's happening in girls' education. And we came together to say, what if we created a lesson that could be accessible by anyone anywhere? And so we had this idea of this booster lesson around girls' education and climate change. So I'm honored to be able to pass this over to my dear friend, Julia, who wrote this beautiful lesson with Casey and Molly in partnership with Girl Rising, Future Rising Girls and Climate Change. And for us, this is a call to action for everyone to become part of this important work. And Julia, I'm excited to turn it over to you and so you can share with everyone what you've been able to create. Uh, thank you, friend. You truly are a force of nature. I'm actually in my classroom in Evergreen, Colorado. I am a sixth grade language arts teacher um, who is so passionate about infusing roadmaps to change and empowerment in her classroom. I couldn't keep myself on the ground when um, Molly and Casey and Jen asked me if I'd be open to creating this booster lesson. Um, so my job here, my gift here is to kind of walk us through it. Um, a little bit about me, I have been using, um, actually kind of working with Girl Rising in my classroom for over five years. Um, it's part of our, our Stories Unite Us, um, PBL, our project-based learning unit, <clears throat> excuse me, and um, in that unit, we talk about the power of stories and connections and connecting those dots and how learning about each other's stories can help um, just change our view of the world. It can break down barriers. It can help us value and understand more about the world. It truly can help us be our best selves, um, not just from a learning aspect, but from an understanding, empathy, and global collaboration aspect. Um, I'm also a Teach SDG ambassador. So we do weave um, the SDGs, the global goals into our classrooms. Um, and so as an SDG ambassador, I too am active and a participant in the Climate Action Project, um, which again has just led me to this beautiful pathway to connecting my classroom with the world in a way that allows it to be kind of a learning platform for all of us. Um, the lesson that I had the privilege, I had the opportunity to put together, um, weaves in elements of storytelling, the power of stories, identity work, um, and climate action in a through the lens of we are all climate education activists. So it's a personalized learning journey meant to kind of spark that that creative um, connection in all of us to how we can connect Girl Rising and climate action to our own day-to-day -day lives and choices. As you can see, um, I'm pulling up the one of the first slides in the booster lesson. Um, you'll notice when you actually download the activity and the lesson, there are a few different parts. Um, the learning goal in big picture of the lesson 
you can see right here, it's to understand the relationship between gender equity and educational opportunity as related to climate change. Um, the first essential question is a big one. How does climate change impact girls around the world and prevent them from getting an education? And so when you pose this question, when we pose this question, we get to pose this question in our classrooms, we get to honor each student's lens, each of our learners viewpoint into how what, do I understand this? How do I understand this? How can I create a frame of reference for myself? And then how can we together kind of make sense of what's going on in the world, right? Which is the gift of a classroom on the planet, especially in the United States, I believe right now, we get to help kids make sense of what's going on in the world, right? So with that, I'm gonna take us into the components of the lesson. Um, when you download the lesson, um, you will see a set of components. You'll see the activity description, um, and it's broken into three 30 to 45 minute sessions. Um, there's a guided learning slide deck, including um, essential vocabulary, um, some identity silhouette work and tutorials. Um, you'll see Suma story video that you can just um, use directly from the link. You'll see the Educate Girls Protect Our Future, Future Rising video, and you'll see the Future Rising fact sheet. Um, all of these components are embedded into this activity. So you download that one PDF, you can click from there, um, including that slide deck that you can use in your classroom. Um, what I'm going to take us through right now are some specifics from both the slide deck and the activity description, just so you get a little taste of it. Um, and then if you have questions, please make sure to ask along the way. All right, so first, this is a small screenshot of um, part of the activity description. Um, what we've just experienced is the session one, um, pause, notice, and discuss, right? So if you see the second bullet point shares that the um, SUMA story comes in in just this first part. Um, and as kind of the tease, teaser, warm up, kind of thought provocation before watching um, the question, just asking our students to think about what gender equality and quality education mean to them and how they might connect to climate action, right? So we watch um, SUMA story, we have a class conversation and we have this class conversation using, like I said, this guided learning slideshow. All right, um, here you will see a slide from the guided learning slideshow. Um, this is one of the foundational slides in, this, in the show um, and it's meant to, or slide deck, um, it's meant to create some connection. It's meant to make sure that as we experience Suma's story, um, we step in to her story in a way that doesn't separate us out. Um, it's meant to draw us into the idea that we are a global family, that we are a global ecosystem that works with each other for a, the planet. Um, I love on this particular slide that there are some questions that are kind of that factual, what did you pull? What did you draw in? What is your brain telling you about what you just saw? Um, what connections can you make? How do you, how can you inform? How would you like to share um, statistics? Um, it also though invites an understanding of climate action in that global ecosystem way. Um, it allows for you to become part of the conversation. So teacher as student, student as teacher, there's no like that power dynamic in a classroom just fizzles when you sit down and you really have a conversation with your students. Um, and really it's meant to help kids understand that just like our human bodies, right? Just like our human bodies, our planet systems work together too to create balance, nourishment and overall good health and well-being. And so when we tip the scale away from any single group by limiting the access, access to rights, freedoms, and privileges that we all deserve, we create imbalance, injustice, and inequity. And so when we tip the scale away from girls specifically, we create a ripple effect that exacerbates climate change and can cause an imbalance in how we get to move on the planet, whose stories we hear and whose stories we don't. Um, 
So here, like I said, this is a, an, a conversation opening. It is by no means prescriptive. So use what you will and take what you like, um, but it's meant to set that foundation like a global sharing. And this next slide, um, this is about, this is the lesson description, so the activity description. This is the session to explore and design with optimism. Um, in this way, again, um, both gender equity and climate action can allow for inviting students and teachers in as co-learners. So as you create together with your students this conversation, uh, an, a, a sense-making conversation, um, we get to bring in then impact or conversation around climate change. Um, and the Future Rising video um, and the Future Rising fact sheet are two other ways to infuse both that like connection through video and multimedia, along with facts about statistics, what's going on in the world right now that we can make connections with and we can use to inform our own connection. Um, this next slide is the actual slide from the slide deck um, that connects to that specific lesson. Um, so if you look, you'll see here's how you can access Future Rising webpage and the resources to do deeper. I love to do this in small groups in my classroom. So uh, we break out into small groups. We each watch individually. We have a little film festival um, and each small group watches this video and then uses that this resource link to kind of dig in a little bit deeper. So it moves from that individual, hey, what are my thoughts around this? How did this work? To a more small group, I think I'm ready to start sharing my thoughts. What do you think about this? What do you think about this? So we start um, sharing in a way that allows us to use our voices to make those connections and then build empathy, right? So once we go through here, um, once we take a look at the um, Session two, so building in and how can we show up as an advocate for climate equity and climate justice, um, rather than take kind of a doom and gloom approach that creates eco anxiety and complacency, um, we suggest focusing on the personalized ways we can each affect change as related to our individual passions and our identities. That's where the creation parts come in, right? And the creation part is very linked to Oops, didn't mean to hit play there. Um, identity maps. Um, and identity maps I know are just foundational. They are root in so many teachers' classrooms because they're so important. Um, identity maps allow us to really dig into ourselves, our own um, invisible and visible. So both those things you see on the outside of me and those things that I carry within me that make me who I am. Um, we ask questions like, um, what are most central, which identity components are most central to your experience in the world? Do any of your identities give you privilege or mar marginalize you? Drawing back to connections to SUMA. Um, we talk through what, what does invisible mean? What does invisible mean? So uh, you just an, a, a kind of a collective experience of who am I? Who are you? What things do we have in common? Um, and then how can we use that experience to connect to climate change and climate action education? For example, we can open up to an intersectional focus as we use them to connect personal and local experiences of climate change to what we've explored here. So because of our identity here in Evergreen Middle School in Evergreen, Colorado, what we see and connections to climate change are actually happening momentarily. There is a wildfire burning on one of my very favorite hiking trails right now in Boulder, Colorado. Um, it is a wildfire that was sparked. We're thinking right now that speculation is human error. And so as we, it's, it's spreading though rampantly and there are so many connections that we have here um, watching our forests or watching flooding happening, watching things around us, air quality and pollution that we can connect with in Evergreen. How do those things relate to what someone might be experiencing in Nepal? How does that relate to what someone might be experiencing in Australia? What are the things that connect us? And what are the things about each of us that are pathways to creating action, like passion-based action? 
And so this identity map gives us this experience to think about what's really important to us, what we care about so much within ourselves, and then use that as that connecting point to reach out and not just um, feel what it might be like to be inside the stories of others, but also how we might use our passion, use our agency to create plan, to create change here. Examples, here are um, silhouettes, right? So after we do that work and we have those conversations about invisible and visible aspects of our identity, how that might even connect to the earth's invisible and visible aspects and what, what the earth might be experiencing, the story of the planet right now, um, we move into some creative time. Creativity is super important. Um, my kids in particular love to be creative using um, digital tools whether it be Google Drawing, Canva, Adobe, like there's all kinds of digital tools you can use. The idea here though is um, that they would take their identity map and then they would pull that into a silhouette. Um, the silhouette idea comes from another teacher who actually pulled it from a different teacher who wrote the book Being the Change, Sarah Ahmed, it's fantastic. Um, this particular silhouette actually came to me via Amanda Gorman, because I've seen and we've, integrated her work and her silhouette about being the light in the world in our classroom. And so each of our kids in our classroom then um, create a silhouette and they pull in what they stand for. Um, the one on the left was created by Ella. Ella is currently a seventh grader. Um, so she was with me last year. We were on in and out online um, and she struggled last year. Um, and this was a way for her to connect to um, what she cared about and her story and how that might relate to others in the world. Um, her silhouette is very much about standing for climate justice. She felt very empowered by that justice component. Um, and then on the right, this was actually created by a student named Baxter Stewart, who is currently an eighth grader, um, who I had two years ago. And he created this um, for Suma. He was so drawn into her story and so drawn into to the idea that change things and that there are people on the planet who might still, sorry, end of the school day, um, who might still have um, connections and intergenerational trauma related to slavery um, that he couldn't do, he, he, he chose to create one for Suma as kind of an homage, as kind of a tribute to her. And so since then, we've been using this silhouette as a way to make other connections. And so from here, from the silhouette, um, should you choose, um, what we do in our class is always get it out there, amplify your voice, right? You've just identified all of these parts of you that make you you, that you are so proud of. Um, that you get to celebrate, that we get to celebrate. We are worthy, right? We get to celebrate all of these things about us that make us those people who are climate, ag climate action activists and we get it out into the world. Um, I have students who make their own social media accounts. I have students who post to their um, personal accounts. I post some, we just decide that what we're going to do is get a message about how we can take action, what we care about and how we can make connections to the world. Um, and so session three is about taking action and extension. Um, here you'll find everything from resources to a Padlet board to share. Um, there's all kinds of collaboration here. You can connect with classrooms all over the world. There's a few different ways to tag. Um, both Girl Rising and Climate Action Project or TAG, Take Action Global. Um, and what we do then from there is create a step further. Um, so this in particular, sorry, it's a little blurry, is a meme example. Um, so I have a student this year, so, so this is Lane. Um, I have a student this year who is creating a website. Um, she is doing research on everything possible. She just cannot 
put down her pen, as she says, um, very much intentioned with Malala. She cannot put down and she will not put down her pen um, because she believes in breaking barriers. And so she's doing that work within our school, within our community, within the state of Colorado. She is raising her voice. She's using her voice to ask questions and to just create conversations. Um, this meme here, um, this is what she wrote. I break barriers. I take the extra step. I push the limits. I know my place and I am not afraid to look history in the eyes and say, I am part of her story. Speaking directly to Suma's story. She's saying her story is my story. It's our story. And we get to step forward together, right? We get to set her free. We get to set ourselves free. We get to be that generation of kids, of people who are working for action on this planet that changes everything. It's a gift. It's huge. And so in this meme, you see Baxter's silhouette come in. And so there's this beautiful just learning journey that shared from eighth grade through seventh grade and now sixth grade, three generations of kids in my world, three generations of kids, three, three grade levels of kids who are now choosing to see the world as an ecosystem, choosing to see their story matters, choosing to see that when we take that extra step to push the limits, to break the barriers, to step outside of our classroom, to use a framework that allows us to see into the world and reach a hand across is so powerful because our stories unite us. And that's why Girl Rising, everything Teach SDG, everything Climate Action Project is so much a part of me. It's a part of me, it's a part of our kids, and it's who we are. We get to do this work on the planet right now. We get to use stories to change the way the world values girls and girls value themselves. And by doing that, we are the strongest, most powerful climate action activists out there. We are changing the world.